So the challenge, as, as we know, is how do we get enough money into, into the sector to make good on the responsibilities and obligations we have to, to a lot of people for a, for a decent quality of life? And we know that there isn't enough money on, in the public sector balance sheets for the challenge. And we know that there is actually, actually is plenty of money in domestic savings and in, in, in pension funds and so forth that sit in the private sector. The question is, can we, can we downscale those large pools of money into specific, into specific projects? My sense is that it can be done, but it requires three things to happen. In the first instance, we need to better understand the different types of infrastructure projects that there are to be to be done. So people talk about this as one single asset class. Well, actually, there's a huge range of things from, you know, uh, sanitation and services to supply to things upstream to downstream, flood defenses and so forth. Understanding the range of what infrastructure is there to be built is a major part of reaching a solution because certain types of projects will always be better off being invested in by government, because that's the scale at which it operates, other other projects will become more sensible for the private sector. So that's the first thing, a typology of infrastructure investment. The second thing that is poorly understood, I think, particularly within the water sector, is that there is no one investor. So even within the investment side, a big range between sovereign wealth funds, bond funds, equity funds, um, uh, high net worths and so forth, and understanding that actually there are different types of investor who have different priorities, uh, some of whom may emphasize social return more than economic return, and, and synthesizing those different opportunities on the investment side is a key part of the solution. And the third component is understanding that you need to blend things together. So there will be projects which have a high, infrastructure projects that have a high economic return, others have a very low economic return, but a high social return. And mixing those components together to optimize the type of projects that an investor can invest in will unlock a lot more opportunity from that side. And similarly, looking at the investment side, there will be projects where you will, you will definitely need some money from governments to cover, say, the first loss in the project. But then you can move up the, up the chain, if you like, bringing money in from different sources to try and optimize how different sources of funding can be matched against different types of investment projects. Sounds easy. It's not easy, of course. Um, and there's a big piece in the middle that needs to be worked through, which is how do you make this stuff happen? But there's so many reasons why we can be optimistic that there is a way forward if you just look at how models of intermediation and finance have worked. And more than anything else, there's never been a more important time to try to find a solution to these challenges.